Hello, welcome to the Word of Hope podcast. We believe it is the Word of God that changes and strengthens our lives in such a way that we are able to effectively fulfill our assignment and manifest heaven right here on earth. It is our goal to lead you to a place of confidence and hope as you help others progress and elevate. Thanks for tuning in. Now, let's prepare our hearts for today's message. All right, glory to God. Well, today I tell you what, I'm excited about getting the word. One thing I love more than teaching the word of God is receiving the word of God. Amen. And we have our very own, amen, Dr. Felicia Young, prophetess Felicia Young, first lady Felicia Young, who will be giving us the word this morning. My baby, my, my New Orleans accent, my baby. Hallelujah. Teach first lady. Teach. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's such a blessing to bring the word. God is so strategic. Come on, Queens of Hope. You know we all about the girl power. <laughs> okay, yes. Have a seat. Have a seat, y'all. Don't make me nervous. Don't make me, y'all. Okay. Glory to God. So today I'm going to teach about love. 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 Love is an attitude and love is an atmosphere. Let me pray real quick. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I give you glory for this opportunity to be before your people, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that it's none of me and all of you, God. I thank you, Lord God, that I have the easy part, Lord God. I'm just listening for your voice, and I will speak your words with my mouth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so we've been talking about attitudes, and we've been talking about atmospheres. And so we're growing on purpose, right, Heavenly Hope? Amen. All right, we're growing on purpose. And so the foundation scripture, I'm just going to do a little bit of review. Um, the foundation scripture for this series is Isaiah 55 and 10. And it says, For as the rain cometh down in the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper the thing whereto I sent it. And so what they're saying is when the word of, word of God is released over my life, just as it says in this scripture that when the, water, the rain and the snow comes down, the earth has no choice but to respond. Glory to God. And so when the word of God is released over my mouth, over my life, then my life has no choice but to respond. Glory to God. It will be released in my atmosphere and it will make my atmosphere bring it forth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So the only thing that can stop God's word from producing and budding in your life, in my life, is me not speaking the word. It's me not speaking the word. It's good. me not speaking the word, See. then the, ad, the right attitude won't form. And if the right attitude is there, then I don't get the atmosphere. Yeah. So we know that attitude is a position, a posture, a tendency, or orientation of the mind. And then we know that we are responsible, personally responsible, for our atmosphere. Come on. Okay? So... I'm going to remind you that Bishop taught us that the atmosphere is that envelope or medium covering or surrounding a place. Y'all follow me? I promise I'm going somewhere. Stay with me, okay? Atmospheres are architect, architecturally, architecturally designed to bring forth. Good or bad things are produced in my life and in your life based on the atmosphere that your attitude has created. Yeah. The atmosphere that your attitude creates is designed to block things and release things. That's what it's going to do. It's going to block things and it's going to release things. That's what your attitude, that's what your atmosphere is going to do that your attitude produced. Yeah. So let's talk about the attitude because we got to go back. If we're going to go back, we're going to go all the way back. So I want to talk to you about point. My point number one is this. 
The words that you speak will form an attitude or shape your attitude. The words that you speak, the words that you rehearse, is going to form that atmosphere, I mean, form that attitude, or it's going to shape an attitude. When I get up here and I get in front of my queens and, and I say, Queens of Hope, and we say attitude. And that attitude is shaped in you or was formed in you when I say queens. I address you as a queen. Some of us have attitudes in us that have been shaped by people calling us less than what God called us. But today I renounce all of those words in the name of Jesus. We will no longer subject ourselves to an attitude that was formed in us by somebody else's words. We're not going to do it. Proverbs 18 and 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So, if you have death and life in the power of your tongue, what are you going to use your tongue for? What kind of attitude are you going to shape in your own life with your own words? Amen. Glory to God. See, it's true that someone may have said something in the past, and we may be holding on to that thing, and it may have shaped an attitude in us. But today we can drop it. We have a choice today that we can drop what they said and pick up what God says and take on a whole nother attitude. And when we take on a whole nother attitude, what's going to happen? Another atmosphere. Glory to God. Somebody listening. Somebody listening. Glory to God. Come on. Come on. Justice got up here and said, you know, the challenges came and, and all those things and what was said to her and, and what wasn't said. Because sometimes it's not about what's said, it's what you don't say. So she said that her family told her that, you know, go to school, go to high school. College wasn't even brought up to her. But somewhere along the line, somebody said something to this woman of God because what you calling her now? That's, oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. Lord, y'all, don't get too excited. Y'all going to make me nervous, y'all. <laughs> Glory to God. So remember now, the attitude is a mindset that controls your perception, your perspective, your outlook, and your response. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm going to have to talk about it. Talk about it. You got time. You ever know this? You ever, you ever been responding a certain... Ladies. On, what the ladies say? You, you ever been responding a little snappy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't even realize how long you've been snappy, yeah. but one day, the light bulb come on and say, you didn't have to say that like that. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. But okay, their response may have come from a word. I don't hear no more. Amen. But glory to God. But it's still our choice how we respond. Okay, it's still our choice how we respond. So last week we declared, y'all remember now, we declared that we have the mind and the attitude of Christ. We went over Philippians 2 and 5, and we declared that I'm not going to hold on. I'm no longer going to operate from my mindset. I'm going to bind my mind to the mind of Christ. I'm going to let that mind go and take on the mind of Christ. So that means I'm going to say what God says because I need to maintain the attitude. I need to maintain the attitude of Christ. So I got to speak the word of Christ. I have to speak the word of God to maintain that attitude, and that attitude, I'm I'm going to experience the atmosphere of God. Yeah. Now, the minute I decide to speak any other word, yeah. I'm going to experience that other word, atmosphere. Yeah. This is why Jesus, in Matthew 16, 6 through 12, I think I have the scripture. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to it. Let's look at Jesus talking to his disciples. 
Now, many of you who follow us on Tuesdays, you know we're doing the, uh, the Christ-like affirmations. And so Bishop is talking to us about this conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples on a mountaintop. You know, it's kind of like that conversation that your mama used to have to you with you before you go in the store. Yeah. Like, don't get it here. Don't touch it. Don't put your hands on it. Or if you go to somebody else's house, you know, don't get it here and act like you starving. The de- I thought it was just my mama. Okay. So... <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, it says, Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. I'm going to stop right there. He was saying, Listen, disciples, watch out of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, what stands out to me is the leaven part. What is the leaven? What is the leaven? The word leaven in Greek is zume. And it means leaven or ferment. It really means generally a symbol of spreading a nature of evil. When leaven gets into bread, this is usually a term that we use when we're breaking bread. When leaven gets into bread, we think of it as it rises. It's the rising agent. But not only does it rise, it expands. Okay? So Jesus was telling his boys or his disciples, listen, (laughs) beware of what the Pharisees and the Sadducees are spreading, expanding. Beware of that. Because what they were actually spreading and expanding was hypocrisy. Y'all know what hypocrisy is, right? You say one thing and you're doing another. You want me to believe one thing, but you're doing another. He said, beware of the mindset of religion. He said, the Pharisees and the Sadducees want you to believe that they operate from a certain atmosphere, atmosphere of love, and they want to look like they pray in, in, the, in the streets and the squares, and they think that, but that's, see, they want, they want you to believe that, but that's not what their, ad, their atmosphere reflects. So, this for somebody, your atmosphere is going to tell on you. Your atmosphere is going to expose you. You, you, you. you can get in front of me and, <laughs> and fake your attitude. You can't fake your atmosphere. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> glory to God. So, so the disciples reasoned among, uh, amongst themselves, and they were like, uh, you know, is it because we forgot the bread that he's saying this? Their understanding is not rising to the occasion. You know, this is, he's talking about the thoughts. Because if we read further, it say that he knew the thoughts that they were thinking. So, so Jesus is referring to the thoughts. He's re- referring to the words or the actions or the atmosphere of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He's referring to the false doctrines of the Sadducees. And so he's warning his boys. He's warning the disciples. So point number two says this. You can't afford, you cannot afford to permit outside forces to illegally affect your atmosphere. You can't allow them to enter it because if they get in, they're going to act up. Come on. What the saying say? If you let him ride, he's going to want to drive. We can't do it. 
thoughts, lies. So, so, so he was reminding them. Let's go to verse 9. Y'all got point number two? Okay. All right. So, A says, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because you brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves and the five thousands and how many baskets you took up? He was reminding them of the atmosphere that his atmosphere produced. He was reminding, him of, reminding them of the things that his atmosphere produced. He was reminding them, listen, miracles, signs, and wonders follow us in this atmosphere. Because Jesus always had an attitude of faith. He always had an attitude of love. And his atmosphere reflected that. Always. Jesus was on the higher frequency. And so he was coaching up the disciples. He was saying, hey, we operate on this level. We operate. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come, come on back. Come on. We operate on this level. Don't get distracted. Don't get pulled out of character. Don't do that. We operate on this level, and as a result, our atmosphere reflects that. All right? So, so I said, well, God, I have to stand in line with, uh, we, you know, we growing on purpose and atmospheres and attitudes, and this is good. But you told me that this was going to be about love because he gave me the subject or the message first. And, and, and so I said, well, just follow the, the leading. It's like the yellow brick road, you know, the, the brick that light up in front of you. That's what I was doing. So he, last week, Bishop taught us about frequency and hertz, right? I know it might seem like I'm jumping, but again, I'm going to bring it back. <laughs> I'm going to bring it all together. All right. So remember, frequency is a wave pattern. It's a wavelength in a matter of time, Okay. He also taught us that the release of potential is subject to the atmosphere that I've settled in. Yeah. The frequency is based on the atmosphere that we've settled in. So in, in, in my discussion with the Holy Spirit, I said, well, okay, what does love have to do with frequency? And he said, love and frequency. Okay. So I got to go, I got to do my homework. I got to see love and frequency. Love and frequency. What is love and frequency? What is love? So some scientists have discovered that love has a frequency. It is the frequency. That's what it is. It is the frequency. Blew me away like what? It is So specifically, 528 hertz. Is known as the miracle tone, <laughs> which brings extraordinary occurrence that surpasses all known human powers or natural forces. Basically, what I'm saying is it's a miracle. It's beyond human understanding. It's beyond natural understanding the frequency of love. What? <laughs> okay, so 528 hertz are core creative frequencies that have been used for years by ancient priests and ancient healers. 528 hertz has been found essential to sacred geometry circles and spirals consistent with DNA structuring. Healing. Y'all gonna get that tomorrow. Love and healing. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen, 528 hertz is associated with the healing and DNA repair. 528 hertz was used to assist in the cleanup of the Gulf of Mexico after the oil spill. Glory to God. 528 hertz is known as the miracle tone in the Sofigio, where my music people at? Sofigio music scale. Okay, y'all don't know what it is. I, it's, it's a music scale. 
528 hertz is being called the bioenergy of health and longevity. 528 hertz tone is the harmonic vibration that lifts your heart and divine voice in harmony with heaven. 528 hertz is present in chlorophyll, chlorophyll, and human DNA. DNA. Okay, what is chlorophyll? Chlorophyll is because this this was good to me, y'all. Chlorophyll is the green pigment in plants that allows them to absorb energy from light. Y'all didn't get it. 528 hertz allows you to absorb the energy from light. 528 hertz is the central is central to everything in the universe in the musical mathematic ma matrix of creation. Now I could go on and on and on about what I read about 528 hertz and it's a lot. It's a lot. It, it even talked about um challenging immunizations and vaccines and stuff like that because of the healing power of 528 hertz, which is love. Love, love. But we know this. Science doesn't prove scripture to be true. It doesn't. The word, of, the word is truth, and science is playing catch up. Because God already told us, Jesus already told us 2,000 years ago, that love is the attitude. He said this, he said, by, by this all men shall know that you are my disciples if you choose to love one another in John 13 and 35. He said, do everything in love in 1 Corinthians 16 and 14. He said, and over all these virtues put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity in Colossians 3 and 14. He said, and we have known and believed that the love of that, they don't rest me up. <laughs> and we have known and believed that love, that the love God had to us, God is love, and he dwelleth in love, and he dwelleth in us, and us in him. In First John 4 and 16, he said, Oh, no man, anything but to love one another, for he that loveth one another hath filled the law. In Romans 13 and 18, he says, There is no fear in love, because perfect love casts out fear. He said, Love worketh no ill towards its neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. He said, And walk in love as Christ have loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. He said, for this message ye have heard from the beginning that we shall love one another. He said, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you and that ye also love one another. Glory to God. Now, Glory to God. Now, before I give this back over to Bishop, Bishop, I want you to stand up, and we're gonna. I want you to repeat after me. Come on, now. Hallelujah. Because remember, the words are going to create the attitude, and the attitude Amen. is going to create the atmosphere. Yes. So, repeat after me. I am responsible for my atmosphere. I will maintain the attitude of love. I will, I will manifest the atmosphere of love. Glory to God. Amen. Thank y'all. We pray today's message was a blessing to you. If you are interested in partnering with us or supporting with a financial contribution, be sure to visit our website, www.heavenlyhope.church. And remember, it is our God-given assignment to make everywhere we go look more like heaven. Until next time. God bless.